Welcome, I'm Dr. Janine Bowering, naturopathic doctor, and today I'm talking about iodine deficiency and who is at risk of an iodine deficiency. So vegetarians can be at risk for not getting enough iodine in their daily diet. In this study, we can see that the authors talked about vegans, vegetarians, and possibly even pescatarians in Norway, where this study was evaluated, are unable to reach the recommended iodine intake take merely from food and are dependent on iodine supplements. They further went on to say that there is an urgent need for dietary guidance targeting vegans, vegetarians, and pescatarians to avoid inadequate iodine intake. So the you know, knowledge base for vegetarians. But I was even surprised by the pescatarians because you would think that even, you know, in most fish sources that unless it was freshwater fish, then this could be where the deficiency of the iodine is happening because they're not eating enough of the ocean going fish, which should have some iodine. So important in the knowledge base and educating vegetarians that making sure that they're getting enough iodine maybe from other sources like seaweed would be something that could be implemented. Especially now for vegetarians that consume a lot of something called the goitrogens and if they're eating a lot of these raw, so the goitrogen family includes broccoli as well as cauliflower, also Brussels sprouts, cabbage and soy. So if vegetarians or even other people are consuming a lot of these goitrogenic foods, again, the jury is still out as to how much of a negative impact these can have. And the reason why they're called goitrogens is that it traps iodine and causing potentially a goiter. And goiter is related to thyroid function and often a lack of iodine. So by consuming these foods, especially in the raw state, it can trap that iodine and now run the risk of developing a thyroid disorder. So this is something that, again, the jury is still out. Not all endocrinologists are going to agree for the fact that they can have that much of a negative impact on the thyroid health and the iodine status. So one healthier way to do this is to steam these very healthy vegetables. And that's where, you know, in my opinion, by still continuing to consume this group of vegetables, especially because they contain indole 3 carbon the I3Cs, which is important for, as females for trapping our estrogen and, the, and especially the more damaging types of xenoestrogens in that we get from the environment. So this is something that I believe it outweighs, you know, eating these in a steam state. It certainly outweighs not eating them because of possibly trapping that iodine. So again, you've got to do your due diligence. You have to do what's right for you in terms of your own diet and your own situation. But I I still consume these myself and continue to do that if and I try to eat them you know lightly steamed so that if there was a goitrogenic effect that that has been minimized. Now another group of individuals that may be at risk of an iodine deficiency are the paleo community. Often paleo people are not always consuming regular table salt. They trend, tend to go with the fancier salts if you can call it that. So things like the Himalayan salt, the sea salt, which doesn't always contain enough iodine. It's not always naturally occurring. So one of the things that you could do if you are paleo or you know you really restrict your diet is to look for an iodized sea salt which in which the iodine has been be added back in to ensure that there's enough iodine. Also for people that have been told to have a low salt diet because of their high blood pressure this is something that's really important to you know make note of the fact that you may be running the risk of an iodine deficiency. So making sure that you're getting enough from your food sources in your diet, which is something that I talk about in another video. So make sure you check that out is really important to up your iodine status and of course protecting your thyroid to make sure that your thyroid is functioning optimally. Also smokers can be at risk of an iodine deficiency. One of the components in cigarette smoke actually decreases the absorption of iodine and, and can put you at that further risk. And for people who have fluoride, so either, whether that's drinking fluoridated water, also using a fluoride toothpaste, can run the risk of trapping that iodine. And 
for people who or the kids who get fluoride treatments in the at the dentist appointment this is something that you want to be aware of it's not something that I allowed my children to get and again talking just from my own personal views and personal research that I've done on fluoride it's not one of the things that I choose to use so you can make that switch today find a non fluoridated toothpaste definitely they are becoming more and more available which I'm excited to see even the big mainstream toothpaste companies are now making and giving options uh, for a fluoride free type of way to brush your teeth so definitely check that out it's definitely better for your iodine status and for your thyroid as well so I hope that you've got some questions or comments I would love to hear from you please drop them in the comment section below be sure to share this video as well and give me a big thumbs up I truly appreciate all of your great feedback also if you're new to my channel make sure that you subscribe click that bell to turn on all notifications so you always get my newest and latest uploads and remember to always take good care of your health and do it naturally thanks for watching today